So if you follow this program, you know that it's really difficult for us on the left to get people in America to pay attention to Enbridge's Line 3 pipeline. This is basically DAPL 2.0, where indigenous protesters are leading the fight against this new pipeline, and they're being brutalized by police forces. Their sovereignty is at risk of being violated here, and it already has been violated. But the media just isn't paying attention to this massive scandal, and the Biden administration is remaining silent, even if he claims to be a fighter for climate justice. But thankfully, this movement to stop Line 3 got a massive boost when members of the squad showed up in solidarity to march with the activists fighting to stop Line 3. So as Jessica Corbett of Common Dreams explains, members of the progressive squad held a press conference in Minnesota on Friday to draw attention to the indigenous-led fight against Enbridge's Line 3 tar sands pipeline, which water protectors and environmentalists have been battling on the ground and in court. Hosted by Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, the press conference also featured remarks from U.S. Representatives Cori Bush, Ayanna Presley, and Rashida Tlaib, as well as Minnesota State Senator Mary Kunish. We are here because nearly all of Minnesota is in a state of drought, Omar explained. We are here because wildfires are burning in northern Minnesota. We are here because the Twin Cities just had their hottest summer on record. We are here because the climate crisis is here. The climate crisis is now, she continued. The climate crisis is happening, and the last thing we need to do is allow the very criminals who created this crisis to build more fossil fuel infrastructure. Omar pointed out that the Canadian company's partly completed Line 3 pipeline, intended to replace an aging pipeline with smaller capacity, is set to cross wetlands in over two 200 water bodies, endangering the health of her constituents and treaty lands of indigenous peoples. The Minnesota Democrat also highlighted law enforcement's oppression of Line 3 protesters, noting that over 700 water protectors and indigenous leaders have been arrested. Now, their presence there, in and of itself, is huge because them being there draws attention to their presence. It gets people to ask questions about why they're there. What is Line 3? Why should I be concerned with Line 3? And after all of the headlines we've seen just this year as it relates to climate change, it shouldn't even be a question. So the fact that they're going there when other lawmakers don't even seem to care, when the Biden administration has just been dead silent on this, it's really important. It matters. Now, before they actually went there, Ilhan Omar actually penned an open letter to the Biden administration urging him to halt this pipeline, to shut it down, because he has the authority as president to do that. He did it with the Keystone XL pipeline, and he could do it now. But he's not acting because not enough people are making noise. So this right here, what they're doing, is invaluable because it helps with that effort. Now, what's interesting is that Another lawmaker from Minnesota, a Republican, went on Fox News and he had something to say about uh, their presence there, which is uh, really interesting. Speaking of the left, AOC and the squad, they're, they're targeting the Line 3 oil pipeline, the project that is in your district. Um, they want it canceled. Speaking of inflation and the cost of gasoline, uh, you don't want it canceled. Why? Well. You're exactly right. I, I spoke about this in downtown St. Paul uh, this past uh, this morning. Uh, listen, Enbridge Line 3 replacement, it's a replacement pipeline from of a 60-year-old pipe, almost a $4 billion investment uh, in Minnesota. Union skilled labor, those are our friends and neighbors that are making good wages. And uh, the squad is in our great state uh, protesting that pipeline, which is 92 plus percent complete. There is going to be oil running through that pipeline. And it's just uh, coincidental that my assumption is they flew into Minneapolis-St. Paul area. This pipeline uh, services a, 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 the Rosemont uh, facility that makes uh, produces the jet fuel so they can arrive in their jets. And so what we have to do is we have to understand that energy dominance and mining dominance is a big part of uh, securing our supply chain dependency for this nation. We've learned so much uh, over COVID, and uh, we're going to stand up against these socialist policies. And one of the things we have to do is put good bipartisan legislation together. And again, yeah. the Democratic Party from this administration down is not equipped to lead. Yeah. yeah, and they have no problem asking OPEC and countries in the Middle East that don't like us to pump more oil to help us. It just yeah. makes no sense. Congressman, thank you for coming on today. Good luck with the pipeline. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. You right. betcha. So everything he said there is idiotic, not just because it is devoid of common sense, but because he's not telling you something. He didn't disclose a really important detail that his constituents and Fox News viewers probably would want to know before hearing him speak about this. Uh, but before we get to that, he mentioned energy dominance. 
oh, if the you know United States government wants to be energy independent and you know be dominant in this field, we have to allow for things like this. No, if you want to be energy independent, in fact, fuck that, not just energy independent, but be global leaders here, we know what to do. We invest in clean, green, renewable technology. We stop subsidizing fossil fuels and we stop allowing for more fossil fuel extraction and this sort of infrastructure. Anyone who's talking about energy independence or en energy dominance without talking about renewables and clean energy is lying. They're being disingenuous. And he also got in a, you know, a nice little jab there because they participate in society. Oh, well, I'm guessing they came here in private jets. So, you know, uh, producing oil, you know, helps get their private jets to place. Shut the fuck up. Climate change isn't going to be solved if individually we all choose collectively to make better decisions if we all reduce our carbon footprints. Just 100 companies are responsible for 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. This is something that requires government intervention, stopping these greenhouse gas polluters from continuing to fuck up the planet. He knows this. He's just, he's being disingenuous. He also threw in just randomly, oh, we have to stand up against socialist policies. It's not really socialist to advocate for a future. We can't have a future. We can't have a habitable planet if we continue to let these companies fuck up our planet. That's not socialist. It's not capitalist. It's just being a human being and not a sociopath. But what I want to let you know is something that this dumb fuck didn't disclose to Fox News viewers. So when you go to Open Secrets, you can see that Enbridge donated to quite a bit of politicians, right? Republicans and Democrats, mostly Republicans, but Democrats too. And when you search for Representative Stauber's name... Well, would you look at that? They gave him $5,000 in this last election cycle. $5,000. But I'm sure that, you know, he's just defending this pipeline out of the goodness of his heart. I mean, wouldn't Fox News disclose this really relevant fact to their viewers before bringing on this paid shill? Like, this is literally a paid shill. This man literally took thousands of dollars, $5,000 in one cycle from this company. And here he is defending this company, defending a project that they're trying to pursue, which would net them millions of dollars, possibly billions of dollars in profits. Don't you think that that money, that campaign contribution is really relevant here to this conversation? Shouldn't viewers who are tuning in know that this person is a shill for Enbridge? And you know, what's interesting is that when you look at the contributions that Ilhan Omar took, from Enbridge. Well, look at that. Zero dollars. Nothing found. So should we believe Ilhan Omar, who didn't take money from this company? Or should we believe the individual who literally took thousands of dollars from this company? Who should we believe? Yeah. The fact that he didn't disclose that, the fact that Fox News did not disclose that really important fact, that conflict of interest, tells you everything you need to know. There is not a single good reason to be in favor of this pipeline. Yes, it's replacing an old pipeline, but that's not what we should be doing. Going forward, we need to be building out our clean, green energy infrastructure, wind, solar, hydro, and not continuing down this same path that has led to us fucking up the habitability of our planet. It's unacceptable. And the more shills that I see who take money from these companies and lie to their constituents, lie to Americans, the more angry I get. We've passed the climate tipping point. The IPCC says we're out of time and catastrophic climate change is inevitable at this point. It's a matter of how bad do we want it to get? That's the conversation that we're having. And people like Stauber here who took money from this company, apparently he wants it to get really bad. He doesn't care that his children and grandchildren are going to live in a planet that is a hellscape due to climate apocalypse. He doesn't care. All he cares is that his donor gets to do things that make them more money, even if it's to the detriment of the human species. It's truly morally reprehensible, and if Stauber had any dignity whatsoever, he would resign in shame. Fox News would be fined for peddling this level of propaganda, not disclosing the ties to this company of this congressman. It's just, it's so, it's so disgusting, but totally predictable. Beta male, not a beta male.